Signs of the Last Days. My name is Olushegun Mokolu. In the Gospel, our Lord Jesus Christ explained to us the signs of the end of times or the signs of his return. Now, but in 2 Timothy, we have another set of signs that deals with the evolution, if I may use that word, of man. How man will become in the last days. It's important we check such that we do not find ourselves in that kind of mode. Now, the end of days or the signs of the return of Jesus mainly has to do with the event of God, all that will be happening on the face of the earth. But in terms of the signs of the last days, we are basically looking at the behavioral pattern of human being, how human being will begin to behave in those days. So when you turn your Bible to 2 Timothy chapter 3, 2 Timothy chapter 3 from verse 1, it says, This know also, this know also. Now, that means that among other things that you know, this you ought to know. Among other things that your pastor must teach you, this he must also teach you. Actually, this letter was written to the head of a church. Paul was writing to Timothy. So, when you read the book of Timothy, you will understand the expectations of God for ministers of God. Those things written to Timothy are like God's mind to his ministers. These are the things they are expected to know. These are the things they are expected to teach. So, he says, this know also. So, every child of God must know this. If you don't know this, then something is faulty about your Christian understanding. I will read for that. It says that in the last days, perilous times shall come. When it says in the last days, it means that before this time, we will not be having all of this experience that we will now face in the, in the last days. It is in the last days that perilous time will come. The most painful thing today is that Whereas the perilous time is catching up on us, the ministers of God are still sleeping. I had an understanding some time ago where I saw uh, the ministers of God sleeping. They slept and the church kept piling on them. So the church, people kept sleeping on them, the church, they kept sleeping on them. And a question came to my spirit. If you want to wake these people up, who among the two categories of people are the easiest to, to wake up? And I said the church. Because the ministers were the ones who were under. And they were the ones the church were sleeping up on, on, on top. So they became a pile of human beings. Now if you want to wake them up, you actually, it is the church that will rise up first. Because the ministers are fast, deep in sleep. Anybody who could sleep and pile of people will sleep on you and you still not wake up. And something terrible is actually wrong with you. Now, so, whereas this perilous time is upon us, is closing in on us, these people are still telling you, it's your time to shine, it's your time for this, it's your time for this. They still do not even understand the gospel. They still cannot show you the true gospel. And many people also, that's what you want to hear. You don't want to hear the truth. You just want something that will excite you, that will give you another false promise. I tell people, how come people don't sit down to think? Every time they tell you today is your turn. Now this week, after this, uh, after the rising of the moon, after the rising of the sun, you will not do this again. Those things never come to pass. Why can't people simply for once think that these are just empty words that have been spoken? If it is the word of God, they will come to pass. If you are going to live for 80 years, for example, and for 60 years, they, they still keep telling you that it's your turn, it's going to be your turn, it's going to be your turn. When then are you going to live? When, when then are you going to live? You know, so these are things that they ought to teach. 
Now, but let's look at specifically what Paul was saying to Timothy. But I want you to know that perilous times shall come. Things are not going to be the same again. In the midst of COVID-19, people are saying, let our life return back to normal. What many people don't realize is that life is not going to return back to normal. Not the kind of normal that we know it to be. You are going to be seeing many fearful events. Biological warfare will start on the face of the earth. You will see people die on large scale. The earlier you know this and get your life right with God, the better. Our life is not going to return back to normal. You've got to know that. We may have a temporary peace. We may have a temporary period of grace. But life is not going to re return to normal. Things will get worse. Evil men will multiply on the face of the earth. You will keep seeing evil here and there. Jesus said you will see fearful things. Perilous times will come. Let's look at what the scripture says will happen to the behavior of men during these times. Now, look at number one in verse two. For men shall be lovers of their own selves. Selfishness will multiply on the face of the earth. Everybody will think only of himself or herself. Why do you think a man will steal billions of money Put it in a box and go and hide it in an uncompleted building. He is thinking only of himself. Husband will think only of himself. Wife will think only of herself. Everybody today is simply thinking of theirself. Nobody. Most people are not thinking of other people. Most people don't care about you. People who have money, they want to oppress you with it. They don't want to help you with it. There is great deal of selfishness. In the body of Christ. I'm not even talking about the world. It's growing in the world. But the sad thing is that we are even seeing it in the church. Everybody thinks about his or herself alone. Even some of the posts that you put on your status clearly shows that all you care about is yourself. You really don't care about what happened to the next person. In the days of the early church, if eating meat will make a brother to sin, they will not eat meat. Those are people that cared about other people. But now you don't give a damn. You only care about yourself. You don't care about the next person. The Bible is saying in the end time we will see this on a large scale. Men will be lovers of themselves. They don't really care what happens to the next person. What they care about is what happened to us. I was somewhere and some believers were talking that, well, this pandemic is not going to touch us. God is going to keep us. And I said to them, I know. But you see, I'm equally concerned about the people he's going to touch. I don't wish it to touch any other, any other person. But you see, all we just care about is ourselves. We really don't care about the other person. Selfishness is going to increase, is going to abound. If you look at families today, you will see it. In families, a brother that is well-to-do, a sister that is well-to-do, we only care about himself or herself. Nobody will care about the rest in the family. That's even family. Even in the church, you will rather mock people who don't have cash, who don't have money, than help them. You park cars in your garage, you cannot give it to a Christian brother or sister, you rather prefer to mock them. Whereas those cars are lying fallow. That is selfishness. You have clothes that you are not wearing, that you have piled in the house. Some people are looking for clothes. You really don't care. At the end of the day, when you die, they throw it away. They burn it or they just go and dash it anyhow to anybody. Selfishness will multiply on the face of the earth. The next thing is covetousness. Covetousness is the, the trust and the love for money. That's covetousness. You remember the way Jesus Christ de defined covetousness? A man came to him and said, Lord Jesus, tell my brother to give me my inheritance. That seems logically okay. He came to Jesus. He didn't go to any other person but Jesus. And he was asking for his right. But what was Jesus' response to him? Beware of covetousness. A man's life 
is not based on the possessions that he has. Why would Jesus say that to that man? Why would Jesus say that? You see, the man was troubled about his inheritance because he loves wealth. Otherwise, though it was his right, he actually didn't need it to live. The reason he was fighting for it was because of the love he has in his heart. His heart is attached to money. People will love money beyond what we can comprehend in these days. There is, there is a level of love of money we have never seen before. There is nothing people are not ready to do. I've seen young women showing themselves nude on social media just for the promise of money. Just because a man says he has money, he's working in an oil company, or he's working in this, they are ready to do that. I've seen young men kill their fellow young ladies just to have money. You've seen, you've heard of stories of people who will bury a human being in what they call a church. They really don't care as long as it's all about money. People will begin to do, there is nothing rather people won't do for money. Just to have this money is going to be very serious in this end of days. People will be ready to go to war over money. They are ready to kill millions of people just to secure wealth. He says they will be boasters, boasters, arrogant. People will be boastful and unfortunately, even on the pulpit, you will see boasting on the pulpit. When you even look at many of our programs, you will see boasting. You see people saying, come, come. You will, you will, high blind eye will see all of this. We see. They call it faith. But who told you God was God will do those miracles that day? Who told you? People will boast about things that they do not possess. People will boast about what they do. It will be it will increase greatly. People will be proud. You see, pride. Pride is man's confidence in himself and not in the provision of God. When you live your life, the way you want it. That is pride. You see, some people think pride is when somebody raises his hands up or raises his shoulder up. That's not, that's not really what pride is, is first of all all about. Pride is when you live for yourself. Because the intention of God is that nobody will live for his or herself. You will live for him. When you are not living for God and you are living for yourself, that is pride. And that is what you will see in the end of days. People will advance and begin to talk about, it's me. It's all about me. And I've seen believers sharing posts like that. Oh, it's all about me. It's my life. It's not your life. If it is your life, you won't die. You won't, you won't want to die. But because it's not your life, when the owner of the life feels that this life has lived enough, he takes that life. It's not your life. Life is not about you. But what are we seeing today? People are advocating self. It's me. It's about me. I can live the way I want. I can do whatever I like with my body. You can't. That's why all this, all the uh, Planned Parenthood, you know, you can look at, see, name the coin for it, Planned Parenthood. What is Planned Parenthood when you are having sex outside of marriage? And you are having pregnancy and now you want to you want to destroy children you want to kill children and you are saying it's planned parenthood because they believe that their body is their own they can do whatever they like with it you will realize one day that it is not your body the bible says we will give account everything we do in our body i'm praying that it will not be too late before you realize it so people will be advancing things like feminism chauvinism all those kind of mindset will grow deeply that it's about us. Today, you cannot say homosexuality is a sin. They're like, no, 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 no. That you are discriminating. 
How am I discriminating? It's a sin. It's a sin. Nothing can change it. There can never be gay marriage. A man and a man living together is not marriage. They can live together. It's just homosexuality, but it's not marriage. They can't be married. You can write a law and say they are married. They are not married. Only a man and a woman will go join together in holy matrimony. They are not married. That's the reality. But they are telling us that you should, I should not say it. Why should I not say it? If somebody has opinion that it, this thing is right, and I have opinion that this thing is wrong, should I not express my own opinion? That person should express his own opinion. Let me also express my own opinion. If the scripture says something is sinful, and I have freedom of religion, then I believe that it is sinful. I'm not going to kill you because you are practicing homosexuality. But if you come to my own arena, I will tell you it is sinful. And we don't do it. You can do it. We don't do it. I owe, it, I owe you responsibility to tell you the consequence. It doesn't mean you will accept it. You may accept it. You may reject it. But one day, whether we all like it or not, we will all bow before God to give account. So the scripture says that they will be proud. They will think they don't need God. People will turn against God. They will want to do things that God says we should not do. That's the, the pride of man. Do you know that the devil, do you know his own pride? The Bible says he thought in his heart. He had not executed it. He just thought it in his heart. That was the end of him. He thought it in his heart. And that was the end of him. Pride. You will see pride. People can no longer be broken by the word of God. People will know clearly that this is what the word of God says. They will do, they will do exactly the opposite. That is pride. Like I said, it's not somebody raising his or her shoulder. That is pride. You will see it in abundance. Unfortunately, believers are promoting it. We had a case some time ago about alleged rape by a pastor and so on. And people say, you know, you have to come out and openly to say this thing for you to be healed. And believers are promoting such nonsense. You don't, you are not healed through vengeance. The Bible says by his stripe we are healed. Jesus said the, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to heal the broken hearted. It is Jesus that heals. All these useless psychological things they are telling you that um, it, if you tell, you'll be healed. If you go out, you'll be healed. I'm not saying that you should not report crime. Report crime. But if your purpose is vengeance, or if, you're, if they are deceiving you that if you go public, you will be healed. That is a lie. You are not healed. You can't be healed. It is just the pride of man. What God has called us to is forgiveness. It's accountability. It's not vengeance. We must learn how to forgive the way he forgave us also. So you will see more and more of this movement. They call it the me movement. The me movement is a satanic agenda. There's nothing like the me movement. Our life must be about the God movement. Christ movement, not about us. He paid the price for us on the cross of Calvary. We no longer own ourselves. Even the bread that we break is not ours. When the owner of that life feels that that life has done enough, it will take it. Then you will know and realize that it's not about you movement. The Bible said they will be blasphemers. Blasphemers. Speaking against God. They will seek every opportunity to mock God. Or to mock the things of God. Or to mock the word of God. Brethren. Can't you see that we are bringing comedians to the body of Christ? We are bringing comedians to the assembly of the saints. And we are clapping as they mock God. We are laughing as they mock God. May God just have mercy. That's why you will know that we are being led by many who are already dead. They are dead. We are calling them ministers, but they are dead. They can't see anything. How can we sit down and people are coming to mock God and we are clapping? Every opportunity they can find, they want to mock God. Did you see 
that the cable the other time each time they see the word god in transcription they just block it or maybe translation they just block anywhere the word god why are you blocking god what has god done to you why can't people read god you know why can't people read? i was surprised that dstv that's a cable network in in africa would block god would censor god why why do you why what has god done to you what has he done to you you know it's blasphemy the other day they brought they brought some people on a program around 7 p.m and they were talking about how good gay is and so on how people should accept themselves and i had to write them that's it. Don't you understand that kids are watching TV at this time and you are putting this on there? What do you want to achieve? Who do you want to learn about gay? But you see, the problem is they are looking at every opportunity to blaspheme the name of the Lord. They don't really want to have anything to do with Jesus. If you want to incur the wrath of this world, just stand for Jesus. Once you remove Jesus, this world will be your friend. But once you include Jesus... They don't want to be your friend. That's why many believers are putting Jesus aside. All this Jesus, 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 you too, you are putting it aside. You are, you are not even courageous to pray in public in the name of Jesus again. Because they don't want to hear that Jesus. So you say, we just want to thank you, our creator. We, we are grateful to you for what you have done. Thank you very much. That's your prayer. Because you don't want to offend people with the name of Jesus. You are succumbing to the spirit of the end times. Instead of standing for the name of Jesus, what, of, what will now happen if they put a knife to your throat? Or if they say they are going to throw you into fire, except you bow down, like it happened in the book of Daniel? What will you do? They won't even need to get to that point before you would have compromised. Blasphemers. Disobedient to parent. Can you imagine? That this is one of the manifestations of the last days. People will be disobedient to their parents. You will see kids hating their parents. You will see kids that will go to church, clean the pastor's house, do everything, but they cannot do anything at home. They are not available in the house to do anything. It is church. It is the pastor's house. That's the place they love to go. Disobedient to parents deliberately being disobedient to say see this is what i want to do did you know that if your parents says make sure you stay in school make sure you stay in school you say all right i will stay in school but then you leave school and go and stay with a boyfriend for one week you are not only being disobedient to god you are also being disobedient to your parents they cannot send you on errand they cannot ask you to do anything. Even the way, even if you do it, you do it grudgingly. You do it in a way that they don't feel comfortable sending you or requesting that you do anything for them the next time. What you don't realize is that you are already caught up with the spirit of the Antichrist. You better repent today before it is too late. Unthankful unthankful and you know what i realize about being unthankful it's a reflection of the way you think is a reflection of how you can understand situations so you will spend a lot of time complaining i don't have this i don't have that you even be angry at god you forgot that you are not on hospital bed you can't remember that they are not putting oxygen in your nose you are not gasping for air. One of your legs has not just been amputated. You forget all about the goodness of God. All you care about is the fact that you can't, you can't get a decent mobile phone. As if that is what you came to do in this world. You can't get a car. Your business is not moving. Unthankful. For the many goodness of God. Unthankful to one another. You will see a brother, he will help another brother to rise up. He will become somebody in life. He doesn't care again to look back and say, ah, let me help all these people who helped me. People are too quick to forget those who helped them. Nobody is looking back anymore. 
You thought, oh, I have made it now because I wasn't lazy. You thought it's because you are not lazy. You forgot that some people helped you. Unthankful. Many cannot even take care of their parents. You are sleeping in five-star hotel. Your, your parents, they are sleeping in five-star five, five star floor. Five-star floor. You are sleeping in five-star hotel. You cannot take care of your parents. You can't remember the sacrifice they made for you to be who you are today. If they didn't care for you, will you grow up to be who you are today? Unthankful to parents. Unholy. Unholy. You know what holiness means? Before you know what it means to be unholy, understand first of all what holiness means. There's a quick way I explain holiness. Holiness is not what people often think uh, holiness is. Some people think that holiness is about not wearing trousers for a woman, not wearing hair. And those are things they call holiness. That's not holiness. You see, under the covenant of the law, it is required that you sanctify or you anoint all the articles of the temple and make them holy. So even the cup that we use has to be anointed to be made holy. Now, why do you make cups, spoon, fork, all of those things? Why do you have to make them holy? Why do you have to anoint them to make them holy? They don't commit sin. Holiness is not about sin. It's far more than that. Holiness is about being dedicated to God. That means you are no longer useful for yourself, for others, except only for God. That's what holiness means. So holiness simply means that a life that is completely dedicated to God a life that is being lived exclusively for God. You remember in the book of Daniel, when a king trying to drink, share the same cup with God. He didn't know that cup had been anointed. You don't drink with that cup. Even the priest cannot drink with that cup. That cup is exclusively for God. That cup is made holy. So you see that the issue of sin is even small matter. Because of course, anything that is exclusively to, dedicated to God cannot be used for sin. But you can't even use it for even your own. Did you know that when, when you open your mouth and say somebody is stupid, do you know you are living for yourself? Because God who owns that body, if that body truly belongs to God, that body will not say somebody is stupid because God will not use that body for that purpose. God will not use that mouth for that purpose. When you fornicate, when you commit adultery, when you are telling lies, covetousness, stealing, all of those things, masturbation, drug addiction, all of those things, you are simply showing that God has no place in your life. You can't be doing that and say, oh, I'm holy. You are not holy. In what way are you holy? The Bible says, I hold you, brethren, by the mercy of God, that ye offer your body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. He said, this is your reasonable service. What do you think Christianity is all about? They are lying to you and that, oh, the blood of Jesus had, had covered your sin. If it truly had covered your sin, then truly you will not be living in sin. So why are you still living in sin? Why are you living in sin? So people will be unholy. Unholy. Nobody will really care so much or maintain the standard of the word of God anymore. Is it that they are into false holiness or they are not holy at all? You know, it's easier for you to say, okay, I, I will not wear a ring again. That's easier for you. But it's not easy for you not to lust in your heart. So people will focus on those things that are not the things that holiness focuses on. On holy. Without natural affection. Ah, you will see wickedness. Without natural affection. When you hear the way some husband treat their wife. Or the way some wife treat their husband. Or the way some bosses treat their uh, uh, employees. You know, you, when you hear some stories, you are like, can this be possible? There is no even natural. We are not talking of divine love. Just that natural affection again. You will see mother kill her, her own child. You will see a child kill parents. Some hate their parents. If they have opportunity, they will kill them. Some are actually praying for their parents to die. No more natural affection. Wickedness everywhere. Wickedness. Wickedness. Just pure, pure wickedness everywhere. 
That's one of the signs of the t- end of times. Truth breakers, people who cannot keep their words. You know, today people can't even keep their words. People can't say, okay, this is it and it will be that. You will meet it like that. They are truth breakers. Oh, I love you. I'm going to remain with you. It's a lie. It's a lie. Both men and women are unfaithful. Are unfaithful. Young ladies who are engaged, they still be having sex with another person. Young men who are engaged to somebody, they are having sex with another person. Married people who had gone who had gone before the children of God to say we are one, we have renounced every other person, we will be with each other. It's a lie. They are still going out secretly, engaging in sin with other people. Truth breakers, they cannot keep to their words. People are no longer truthful. They can't say, well, I've given my word for this person. I'm going to stand by it. Sentiments, ethnic sentiments. Because somebody is not from your tribe, you hate him. You are not a person of integrity. You do not judge matters purely on merit. You have to judge it on sentiments. I, can't, I used to say that you can't be born again and be a racist or be a tribalist. It's not possible. If you are a tribalist, you are not born again. You don't know Jesus. Some are so deeply rooted in this thing. They do not see anything again with any natural uh, uh, objective view. Everything is colored with tribe issues, with ethnic issues. They only see things based on ethnic issue. They look at it from that narrow angle. Truth breakers, not people of integrity anymore. The same thing even on, on at racial scale. People see things only based on their race. Whether you are from their race or you are not, that's all that matters to them. People can't keep their words. People are saying something on TV, they are doing another thing in their bedroom. People lie openly. Things they know that they are not going to do, they lie about it openly. Incontinent. Sorry, before that, false accusers. False accusers. Accusing people falsely. Is that not? That's not what it means. Right? Accusing people falsely. People don't take time to actually judge issue based on fact anymore. You just see a post on social media. You cannot click on the link to read the story. You're already making judgment. Somebody will share a video link. You don't know what is in it. You've not watched the video. Because the link has some form of title, you begin to make judgment. Why not take your time to first of all watch it? And if you can't watch it, why can't you keep your mouth? So today, people just people will just conclude and just say things and everybody will buy it. You know, the I, I recently heard of um, a bill that is going to be passed in a country and the content, and then people start going about that, oh, this is what they want to do. I, I was so sure this is, not, this is not the case. Now they've made the bill public. But you see, people don't get fact anymore. Nobody's trying to check and say that, let me check, is this true? You just hear something and then you just pick it up and you begin to spread it. Be careful, don't let your mouth be the vehicle for rumor. Don't use your mouth for vehicle for rumor investigate things a brother shared uh, a a news recently by a reputable news house and uh, as soon as i saw that the news i just knew that this is not true this can't happen this person didn't say what they are saying this person said okay and already people were already commenting that's how they are that's how they talk so i click on the story i read the story that was it was pure bad journalism. There was nowhere they even said that this person said this thing that was the headline of the story. Nowhere in the story. I was so sure that this is not possible. This, this is not the story. But people don't have time today to cross check anything. You are just quick to make, to just say, this is it. This is it. 
Whatever they tell you, whatever you just speak, you just keep spreading it. You have become vehicles for rumor instead of being a vehicle for the gospel. You spread rumor faster than the gospel that you are called to, to spread. I was challenging some believers the other day. How come you are too quick to share anything on vaccine, on 5G and so on? Even though you don't know anything about this thing, you don't have fact about it, you are too quick to share it. But you do not share the gospel that way. I said, how come you don't share the gospel that way? You know, let me check. uh, Let me read some of this from other translations I've been using King James. Let me read it from other translations. It says, verse 3, they will be unloving and unforgiving. They will slander others and have no self-control. They will be cruel and hate what is good. Can you imagine? Cruel and hate what is good. We treat each other with cruelty. Did you know that? I used to wonder. If you get to a place and there is, pan, um, what is it called? Confusion. And somebody is about to be burnt to death. And you are there. And the next thing you can do is to bring out, out your phone to record it. Your fellow human being being burnt to death. I used to wonder, how come of all these people, there is nobody that is saying, no, 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 we can't do this. There is nobody that is trying to stop them. Everybody there just agrees. I'm wondering, that's why the Bible says they will be cruel. People are cruel to each other. You see two women fighting in the street. Rather than go in between them and separate them, what do you do? You remove your phone to record it. They are injuring each other. They are di- disgracing each other. Taking each other's clothes off. You don't care. You just want to record it. What kind of heart do we have? That's what the Bible says is going to be happening. If you are like that, it means that you are one of the satanic agents for the last days. It means that this prophecy is being fulfilled in your life. I pray that this prophecy will not be fulfilled in your life. I pray you will examine your life so that you don't fall into this. You know, the Bible didn't say that um, Judas will betray Jesus. It just says somebody will betray him. Judas was the one who fitted himself into that prophecy. Don't fit yourself into prophecy, into negative prophecy. Don't fit yourself into it. We are so cruel to each other. You will see where you have housemaid, you have houseboy, housegirl, or somebody helping in the house. You might treat them. People are living with you. You might treat them. You don't care. You treat your own children better. You treat other children worse. Wickedness in high places. Everybody is just wicked and care only about their own lives. Verse 4. Talk about traitors betrayers you can't hold people in trust any longer you talk to somebody now you confide in the person he goes and tells the next person the very person you are confiding in is saying this the very person you are helping the very person you have been kind and good to will be the very person that will go and betray you behind you stab you behind you we are going to be having more of that heady high-mindedness can you see heady this is just me i don't care what you say this is just me do you know that there are people today they've been so much brainwashed they've told them that see anywhere anybody is talking about men of god leave that place unfriend them and so on and in their own high-mindedness also they are they are doing it i've seen people that say no 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 I don't even care whether it's good or bad. Once you are talking about pastor, I don't want to have anything to do with you. I don't have to. They've so much brainwashed them. The Bible says test our spirit. The Bible says judge whether they are false pastor or not. He commended the church in the book of Revelation chapter 2 for being able to discern that those who claim to be apostles were liars. If it were today, they don't want to hear. If you like, be a false apostle, just be lying to us. That's what we are interested in. High-mindedness. They really don't care about any other opinion. The lies that they have received is all that is in their head. That's all they know about. You know there are people that they are just within themselves. 
They don't know anything and they don't want to know anything, but they believe they know everything. They just want to be in their own head, that their head. And that's why it's called <laughs> heady, heady. You want to live by your head. The Bible says that. Trust, lean not in your own understanding. Lean not on your own understanding. You don't like being corrected. Anytime you are being corrected, it's a problem. It's an issue. Anytime you are being corrected, it's an issue. Lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. You can do anything for pleasure. You can't do anything for God. You will prefer to compromise for pleasure. I, look at it. What do you gain in sex? Is it not pleasure? So you will rather disobey God to get that pleasure than to obey God. Lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. You can spend hours watching all, all manner of worldly and useless TV programs. To read the Bible is a problem. You can gossip for hours. You can chat on phone. You can do video calls, unnecessary calls for hours. But to spend time in the place of prayer, it's a problem. You can spread rumors, all manner of news, but you cannot spread the gospel. You can't share the gospel. You are a lover of pleasure more than lovers of God. The Bible said this will multiply. Don't fit yourself into negative prophecy. This will happen. Verse 5, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. The Bible says from such, turn away. Can you imagine? From such people, the scripture is telling those of us who are genuine believers to turn away. You see, it's not everybody is important to God. Everybody is not important to you. There are people you need to avoid. Not because you are fighting, not out of malice. Because unrighteousness is contagious. Sin is contagious. Righteousness is not contagious. <laughs> it's easier for people to lead you into iniquity than for you to lead them into righteousness. When you begin to walk with, just imagine somebody is going to club. You say, okay, well, let me also follow that person to club. What do you think will happen? You think when you get to club, you are going to convert that person? Before you know, you start nodding your head to their music. After a while, you won't see anything wrong, wrong in it again. Having a form of godliness. In the midst of all of this, people will try to also prove that they are good people, they are holy, they are righteous. Fake holiness. Fake form of godliness. Everybody will, will have a form of divine being in their life. But they actually don't know this God. You will discover that the genuine power of God. You know, he said as many as he believes, he gave power to become the son of God. You shall receive power when the Holy Spirit come upon you. When you look at this life, you discover that the power of God is not present in their life. There is nothing of the substance and the nature of God that is in their lives. Absolutely nothing. So when you read further, it says, verse 6, For of this sort are they which creep into houses and lead captive silly women, laden with sin, led away with diverse lust. All manner of loss. You won't believe what people are doing today. Homosexuality is just, is just small. People are engaged in all form of things today that, you know, is even difficult to list them or talk about them. Verse 7. That's where we are going to stop. Ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Ever learning. Ever learning. You see, this is focusing now on the church. You will see people who have been Christians for years. There's no difference between them and unbelievers. You've had the same message over and over and over. You are making the same mistake again and again and again and again. What else do you want? You are quick to go to any program. You have notes upon note upon note upon note, but you have not come to the knowledge of the truth. That's why I tell people, it's not what you write when somebody is preaching that matters. Is how you open your heart to obey God. As a principle, I don't write when people are preaching. Not out of anything, because the best way for me to learn is just to open up my spirit. 
Now, I've read some people's writing who took Jotin's donning messages that it has greatly blessed me. So, I know that some people are gifted or maybe called in that kind of regard. But for me, how many things am I going to, to write? How many? How many? So many messages. So, what I do is I simply open up my spirit. People will learn and learn and hear things and hear things. In fact, some, they are, they are actually... Their worship is just is learning. They are just there to just keep learning. They will never, you will never see any of those knowledge amounting to anything in their lives. Coming out of their life, they will learn this nothing. Learn this nothing. The same way they were last year, that's the way they are now. The same way they were 10 years ago, that's the way they are now. Really not learning anything. And brethren, it's a fearful state. The Bible said, Ever learning, ever learning, and never able ah, to come to the knowledge of the truth. You must cry to God today if you're in that state. It's a terrible state to be, I'm telling you. It's a spiritual state. There is no minister you can't hear, but nothing actually changes in your life. You still live the same way. The very person who joined you to start listening to those messages, within a short while, that person's life had changed. That person's life had become transformed. That person himself had become a minister. You are still there, ever learning, but never coming to the knowledge of truth. Nothing is changing about your life, and it doesn't bother you. You've remained the way you are. Ask yourself, you say you've known Jesus for 10 years, for 15 years. What has really changed in your life? Has anything changed in your attitude to life? You are as full of yourself as you have always been. Nothing has changed. You still don't have appetite for the word of God. You still don't have appetite for prayer. You still don't have appetite for righteousness. We cannot see Christ in you, ever learning, but never coming to the knowledge of the truth. That is the church of the end time. May you not be a part of it in the name of Jesus. This message has come to you to warn you, to examine your life. This is how you examine your life. It's, by, it's not by introspection. It's not by looking inward and sitting down, closing your eyes to do meditation. No. How do you examine your life? You place it with the word of God. That's how to examine your life. It's not by introspection. That's what we have done today. Check your life. Look at your life. Ask yourself, are you not having the spirit of the last days in you? Or are you walking in the ways of the Lord? Check your life. Examine your life today. And I want to plead with you. If you are in this state of ever learning, never coming to the knowledge of the truth, drop whatever you are doing and cry to God. It's a terrible state to be. Cry to God to show you mercy. Try to God to remove that veil from your life that has hindered you all this while. You need to cry to God. You need to settle that issue today. Otherwise, it will destroy you. You will only have just Rigmaro around Christianity for years and still die like an unbeliever. May the Lord have mercy on you in the name of Jesus. You see, God has shared this to us because he said this also you need to know. He wants us to know it. So that you are not surprised. So that you can live differently. So that you are not deceived. So that you are not manipulated. You see? That, this is what some people will say. Ah, judge not, judge not. No, Bible, Bible has me to judge. He said, from such, turn away. How will I turn away if I don't judge that this is how they are? Don't let people manipulate you and deceive you with scripture they are quoting out of context. God expects you to judge people. He expects you to know their life. He expects you to see their life and understand how to relate with them. If I don't judge you to be unbeliever, how will I preach to you? It's because I've judged you to be unsaved. That's why I'm telling you about salvation message. I pray the Lord will give you understanding in Jesus' name. My name once again is Olu Shegun Moku Olu. Uh, in case you want to ask me some questions or seek clarifications, my number is this. Plus 234-818-615-7852. For those of you who are watching this on the, the YouTube channel, my details, they will be in the description Below. Please remember to share this message with other believers, and particularly you may want to consider subscribing to this channel. Until next time, when by the grace of God we bring His word unto you again, my prayer 
is that you will not be caught up in the deception and the spirit of the Antichrist that is being poured out in these last days. But rather, you will shine as light and your Father in heaven will be glorified. To him alone be glory now and forevermore. Amen.